everyone and welcome to a video on beach recovery. Here's the track you'd normally take, it's existing wheel marks right at the top, uh, minimal camber and uh, going in a straight line. But what I've done is I've driven my car to the water's edge, which is not ideal, but um, sometimes you do it. I have checked that the tide is going out, not in, and I'm going to, it's just me by myself, no one else around, I'm doing all the filming as well as all the driving, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to get out of this. The vehicle is currently at 20 psi, and you can see it's pretty well sunk in, look at this front left wheel, that's the Definitely not going anywhere. You can see the uh, rear left wheel is slid sideways a bit. I've tried to back up, that hasn't worked. Look at the texture of the sand, it's soft, but it's soft and wet near the water's edge, and then it's soft and dry up near the entry. And now if we take a look at the slope of the beach, that's really significant. One of the reasons beach recoveries are quite difficult, that and the varying texture and softness of the sand as you move up and down the beach. Now this is really important, what I've been careful to do is not to dig the vehicle in. You can see pretty much the only thing touching is the wheels and that's going to mean that I'll be able to get out a lot more easier than if I just sat there and span the wheels. And that's kind of the first rule of sand driving, do not spin the wheels so much that you sink in. That's, if you do that then um, you are going to be in a world of trouble. So here's another location to explain what I mean about wheel spin. So driving the Ranger up the hill, it's all good so far. And then we come to a halt, but you can see that rather than give up, I continue to spin the wheels even though the car's not going anywhere and watch it vertically move down. And then also the diagonal wheel starts to spin. So here it is in slow motion. You can see the vehicle's progressing, progressing, progressing. Now it's about at this point here that I would normally give up, but I'm just going to stop the video there, then we're going to continue it. You can see that all four wheels are turning, the vehicle's not going to go anywhere. But now, even worse, as the vehicle starts to dig in and get cross axled, you'll see the front left wheel stop um, and the other wheels continue. And that really is the point where you've absolutely got to give up. There we go, front left wheel stop and the others are digging in. Okay, so back to the beach, and I've dropped my tyre pressures down to 12 psi. Just that alone has allowed me to move the vehicle, but only just, and I'm not out of trouble yet. So you can see there that very slowly, I'm now actually able to move without wheel spinning. So here's how those tyre pressures actually work and allow the vehicle to move on soft surfaces. So this is what a contact patch looks like. That's the amount of tyre which touches hard ground at 40 psi. We drop the tyre pressures to 30 psi. You can see that there's a significant um, difference, small but significant difference, so the contact patch is greater. Now we go again to 20 psi, and you can see that the contact patch has increased again, which means that the tyre won't sink in as far to soft ground, and the rolling resistance won't be as much. Also important to note that the difference between 40 and 30 is less than the difference between 30 and 20, even though both are reductions of 10 psi. Now we just go just to 15 psi, so we're halving that uh, pressure um, reduction from 20 to 15, but you can see the difference between 20 and 15 is really quite marked there. And if we go from 15 to 10, again, there's an even bigger difference. Now look at the difference between 20 and 10, that's huge. So those last few psi, once you get below about 15, um, 10, 20, make a massive difference. So me going from 20 psi initially to 12 has made a massive difference to my contact patch and the tire doesn't sink in any anywhere as much, which means my rolling resistance is significantly less. Now let's look at rolling resistance from the side. So here we've got a tyre, and we're going to put that 35 psi, and we're going to put it in sand. Now the amount of tyre touching the sand is about that much, but really, uh, right at the edges, that's not really doing very much to support the tyre, and the actual support of the sand looks a little bit like that. We go down to 20 psi, and again, still quite a lot of tyre touching the sand, but it's um, the area supporting it is now quite a bit wider, and 12 psi, again, um, even more area touching the tyre, but not all of that is really supporting it, but it's a lot wider area supporting the tyre than it is at 35 psi, and that's why I get lower rolling resistance. 
Now, if we take 35 psi as a reference, with the 20 psi, the contact patch is about 40% longer, and relative to the 30 psi, the 12 psi is about 120% longer. Now, if we take the 20 psi as a reference, when we drop the tire pressures down to 12 psi, that contact patch gets about 60% longer or, or greater in area and again that's just re reducing that rolling resistance and that's what allows us to move in sand as opposed to generating more traction. So back to the beach and you can see that I'm being so smooth and gentle there. Really important not to get any form of wheel spin at all because then those wheels dig in. I'm not even braking, I'm just coming off the accelerator and letting the vehicle's rolling resistance slow, slow the car down. I'm also pulling it away in second gear low range. In the Ranger, that's how you stacked it, pull it back in sport mode, move the shifter forwards and backwards, that's pretty standard. And you can see there, that's what it looks like on the dash. You can pull away in second low in many four-wheel drives, not all of them like some Nissans. Um, in Toyotas you've actually got a second gear button there, or, or sometimes a newer one, it's selectable from a menu. Okay, now back to the beach, and this time we're going to go back. As you can see, I'm turning the steering wheel there pretty much when the vehicle is stopped, and just going back very smoothly, very gently and then I'm going to straighten it up. Now I've already looked at the condition of the sand and I know exactly how far back I can go. Now I've got the steering wheel straight. Notice I'm going to drive forwards just a little bit and then turn That's it, so that the vehicle can just get going in its own wheel tracks. So forwards and now I'm going to turn, see how far I can get. It's going to wheel spin so that's as far as I can get on, on this run. And I'm turning the steering wheel pretty much as the vehicle stationary, going back real slow. Again just trying not to wheel spin it any point and all I need to do is just get the vehicle's nose round a little bit every time till I'm pointing straight up the beach and then I won't be at a side angle and then I've got a chance of getting the vehicle up away from the water so here we go straight again and then just to turn and yeah it's just going to start to dig in so I'm going to just give it up there turning the steering wheel pretty much stationary coming back and you know, you just have to accept that it's just going to take a long time. The worst thing you can do in these situations is to panic and start revving. It's really smooth, gentle, very low tire pressures. That's the key to getting out. So come forwards and I'm going to turn again. So just notice that again, I'm just driving straight forwards. Then I'm turning once the car is just moving. And you can see that the vehicle is starting just to come around now. It's going to be pointing pretty much up the beach soon and then I'll be able to get up away from the water. Now I'm pointing more directly up the beach, there's less need to go back into wheel tracks but I'm still doing it a little bit, as you can see there's an early turn. But look at that front left hand wheel and you're just going to see it spin a little bit too much there. And as soon as I notice that I backed off, I'll watch it again. So here's that clip, look at the front left hand wheel, slightly spins but as soon as it does I back off the power and then just give it up. If I kept on going I would be in deep trouble, literally. Okay, so the vehicle is now pretty much pointing straight up the beach. Now this means that I'm going to have equal weight on the left and right of the vehicle and therefore equal traction and therefore we shouldn't be slipping sideways. So there will be one set of ruts and one set of ruts means less rolling resistance. So just a question is driving up the beach. Still got the tyres at 12 psi. Could drop, drop them down to 10 or even 8. I stop there because that's as far as I'm going to get without wheel spinning and then just go back exactly in those same ruts, compressing the sand and making myself a set of ruts. And this is what those ruts looks like. You can see that that's as far as the vehicle got. Go down here and I've just got myself a nice compressed runway there. And all I then need to do is just drive straight up that runway to get up out of the beach. Now I've got to turn right onto the um, track out but at least I can get my vehicle off the beach now that's something. Okay notice the way to pull away is very very smoothly to begin with and build up momentum gradually. So here's the same principle on a different occasion, there's the tracks leading up the beach and I've angled up the beach using momentum to get myself up the beach and I've turned exactly down the beach so I've got equal weight on the left side of the vehicle, one set of wheel tracks then I can just back up and I've got an easy takeaway to the left. 
Okay, so there's the four tire marks versus the two tire marks. Then you can see the difference. When you've got four tire marks, then you've got a lot greater rolling resistance when you've only got type two. Okay, so back to the beach, and it's just me by myself, so I'm just shifting cameras around as I, as I do this. And I'm going to try and get the vehicle onto this track, which you can see in front of us now, which will allow me to get up off the beach. Now, I can't go forwards from there because I've only just got the vehicle up to the top, so I'm going to just go straight back and give myself some more momentum. I'm just going to go back really slow and just roll myself a nice, as I do that um, I'm just compressing the sand and making it nice and as hard as it can be so I can start off and just come into a really smooth halt there and again I've just checked how far back I can go now I'm taking my time just putting it into second gear low range and you'll see me just start off very very slowly and then increase the speed you don't want to start off too quickly, very slow start off and then just getting quicker and quicker and quicker and we'll try and turn at the top there and it's not going to work Okay, so what's happening is the vehicle's coming up. I've got um, momentum, but as it gets to this point here, then we get into a cross axle situation where we've got limited weight on the front left and rear right, and that causes wheel spin, kills my momentum. I cannot actually get the car to go any quicker in this situation because I've only got a limited run up and it is uphill as well. So I can't actually use any more momentum. I'm going to have to try angling off. But again, notice, as soon as the wheels spin, I've stopped and I'm going to give it up and try something else. Okay, at this point I could drop my pressures down even further, maybe 8 or uh, 10 psi. I could dig, I could get the max tracks out. What I'm actually going to do is angle off. So I'm just going to go back but, um, at an angle to the beach. Now, before I said it's always better to go straight at the beach, and it is, but because I've started at the top of the beach, and I'm just going back slightly, what I'm planning to do is just roll myself a nice little runway, forwards and backwards, and then hopefully I'll be able to get to the top. Now if that doesn't work, I might have to get the max tracks out, dig, tire pressures, there's, there's always options, but in this particular case, this is the one I've selected. So let's go back really, really slowly again, judging how far back I can go. See how gently the car comes back to a halt, and then we'll just go forwards a little bit and just see what sort of momentum we can get. So back we go, and again, notice very, very smooth, gentle control movement, so the car's not rocking around. You definitely do not want any form of wheel spin or jamming the brakes on, which creates ruts. So also notice how I take off here. That's really slow to begin with, and then increasing the revs and momentum. Again, that's the second low. See if we can get around, and no, not quite. Same thing again, front left wheel, rear right wheel, less weight on them equals less traction and therefore they begin to spin and we don't want that. So we just go back and this time I'm going to angle it off a little bit more and see how that works for us. Again it's ideal to go up and down the beach directly but I'm just going to trade it off with an angle to make that turn at the top a bit less sharp. Okay, so let's take a look at what these ruts look like. So you can see that I've flattened a bit of sand up at the top there. I could get a shovel out and make it even flatter if I wanted to. And I've got back. Now, the last little bit, I've just gone straight back to allow me to have a bit of a runway. You can see there. But even so, because the vehicles um, on a side slope the front wheels have not exactly followed the back wheels. You can see there that you can see it's just moved a little bit further out and that's actually increased rolling resistance which is exactly what we don't want. See that? Just a little bit further to the right there, even though I was going dead straight back. That's why it's so advantageous to go straight up the beach if you can manage it. Okay, so we'll try from here. Now, every time I do this, I'm making progress. I'm getting a little bit further. If that wasn't the case, I would drop my pressures again. I'm at 12, I'd probably go down to 10, even from 12 to um, 10 makes a difference. I get max track out. I do something. You've always got to make sure that you're making a little bit of progress, even if it's just a, even just 10 centimeters every time. That can be enough to get you out of trouble. So just taking my time, just making sure to move off really slowly, giving it another try. You can see there, just get a little bit further, but again, never letting the wheels spin and dig the vehicle in and just being real careful with the controls as you come back ever so slowly.
and you can see there that the vehicle is ever so slightly just rocking as it comes back through some ruts, not really ones I've created, just kind of the natural way the um, beach is, but any time the vehicle rocks um, or goes through any form of rut, you lose momentum, and losing momentum means you may, may not be able to make it. And we'll try again now. So enough momentum this time, over we go around to the top and patience and smooth careful driving has paid off as opposed to impatience and a lot of revving. So a summary of the techniques used. First one is lower tyre pressures. I started at 20, went down to 12 to recover, could have gone to 8 but then you've got to drive very carefully so that you don't run a tyre off the rim. Then never wheel spin. If it looks like you're all spinning, stop, back up, drop your tyre pressures, dig out, do something, but never ever spin yourself in. Then make yourself one set of wheel ruts. Sometimes you've got to turn, but minimise that, because remember, whenever you turn, four wheel ruts, much greater rolling resistance. Also, try and go straight up any slope, because if you don't, any slipping sideways will massively increase rolling resistance, because then you'll get, in effect, four sets of ruts. Be very smooth with your stops and starts, roll to a halt, don't use the brakes and use second gear or similar to pull away. And then patience, if even if you're making tiny bits of progress keep going and keep doing that, but if not, just change. You can't keep doing the same thing again and again and expect a good result. Now here's another example of the range and trouble on the beach, this time we have actually stuck to the top of the beach on the tracks but nevertheless we are bogged. So this time we did drop pressures right down to about 10-12 but that wasn't enough so we just used max tracks to get the vehicle out. Now we could only really move the vehicle maybe about 4 or 5 metres every time before it would come off the tracks and get bogged again but 4 or 5 metres was enough so after about 15 repetitions of moving the tracks forwards and backwards we were out free and off we went. So far I've just sewed very smooth, slow, gentle manoeuvring on sand, but there are times when you do need momentum, and here's an example, which is ascending an off-camber, fairly steep, rutted dune out of a beach. So here's the three essentials you need for sand driving recovery. One is a tyre pressure gauge, absolutely essential, because tyre pressure is really the key to sand driving. The next thing you need, although I didn't use it this time, is a long handled shovel and then finally four traction ramps, in this case Max Tracks here. If you've got those three, then I reckon you're pretty much set to get yourself out of any sand driving situation you can find. So thanks for watching, hope you learned something. Please subscribe to the channel for more content like this or cars, towing, racetracks or whatever the readers find interesting. Thanks, bye.